Hello, I'm Jackie Flavin, Customer Insights Leader with Demco, and this is Open Book, our weekly conversation series with industry experts about how they're navigating COVID-19 challenges. Today, I'm joined by Stephanie Fries. Stephanie is the Assistant Interim Director at John McIntyre Library, which is part of the um, Muskingum, am I saying that right? Muskingum, yeah. Muskingum. I'm, I, I will mispronounce the word Smith, so I, my apologies. That's fine. West Kingdom County Library System in Zanesville, Ohio. Uh, Stephanie, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, you're welcome. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, we're excited to have you here um, specifically, too, to talk about long-term planning in the middle of a pandemic. Um, mm -hmm. you know, how do we plan for 2021? That's probably the question of the day for so many people. Um, maybe a good place to start is, could you tell us a little bit about the library um, and your role at the library? Yeah, sure. So... Um, I work at Muskingum County Library. Like you said, we are situated in Zanesville, Ohio, um, where our largest city is in the county. We're on the edge of Appalachia um, in Southeast Ohio, but we're only an hour away from Columbus. So we get the benefit of being really rural, but we can access a lot of the big city benefits as well. Um, the library system has six locations and an outreach department. So we are a very large county and we reach a lot of different little niche communities throughout. Uh, it's a great place to work with lots of creative staff. And then as assistant director, um, I oversee most of the public service staff and the facilities and just get to work with all of my teams on some awesome programming, projects, collections, you name it. It's different every day. Very cool. Um, and are you um, fully open now during the pandemic? So we are open, our buildings are open, not the full hours we were pre-pandemic. Pre pre um, we're open Monday through Friday, two to six at all locations. And we also are, offer curbside during all those times as well. Very cool. And have you seen um, like any big changes in services or anything like that during the pandemic? Hmm. Um, we have been definitely noticing the changes of dealing with quarantine materials. That has been interesting. Um, as of yesterday, the Realm Study um, Section 3 came out telling us to quarantine items for longer. Right. So that's been an interesting thing yeah. just to deal with returning returning items. Yeah, five days, right, for certain materials? Yeah. 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 So that'll be a little bit of a challenge. Yeah. <laughs> Um, awesome. Okay, so in our earlier conversation, um, you described how you how the library, you and the library are thinking about 2021, um, which is awesome. It's so it feels good to think about the future um, sometimes during the pandemic. Um, and you, I loved how you described like how you're thinking about it. You said, how do we assess what we're doing right now and if it's successful? Um, our work as a library isn't only um, about adapting to our daily life, but also thinking about how we can stay relevant. Um, and strong through this. And then you shared a lot of really great things that the library is, is thinking about. I wonder if you mm -hmm. can share more about those. Yeah, sure. So um, I think as everybody knows, when you close all of your library buildings, you want to stay relevant and you want to find ways to connect people. Our mission is to connect people to information, ideas, and each other. So we sat down at the beginning of the pandemic and said, you know, here are our staff, here we are working from home. Um, we have 86,000 people in this county. What do I do to serve them? Um, and we did that through virtual programming and then um, virtual reference help, website chat, and then we extended it on to being open curbside. And then we opened ours. And now we're looking back and saying, okay, so when I thought in the beginning and middle of March that this was going away in July, I thought, then we'll go back to normal, that's fine. Uh, that didn't happen. So now we're like, hmm, not only is the pandemic going to last through probably the next year, but the lasting effects of it are going to be impacting us as a library system for years to come and it will change, I think, society as well. So uh, some of the long-term planning that we're talking about is changing our facilities. Um, we have older buildings for most of our, actually all of our buildings are at least 20 years old, but we now know that um, we're spending so much time cleaning. So we wanna spend more time on um, water, bottle, water bottle filling stations. Uh, we want to get touchless restrooms, um, more automatic doors, things like that where that would be less interactive. 
and more sanitary for people. Um, we are looking at increasing our outreach services because our community is so spread out and there's so many vulnerable people right now who don't want to go out of the house or can't, not only because they may not be able to drive, but because it may not be safe for them. Um, how can we leverage the services that we have and bring it to them versus making them come in here? Because as everyone knows, the more people come in, the more you clean. Uh, so we're looking at touchless items and those small communities where you drive through and there's usually just one stoplight. What can we do to help them out? And how do we drop off items to them and how do we connect with them in different ways? So with connecting people and just like outreach services, we've done a lot with virtual programming. Um, as hard as it's been for a programmer, just like a performer to perform with no audience in front of them, it's been really rewarding to know that we can still do this and give joy and education to people um, during hard times. So for 2021, we really want to assess what does a successful virtual program look like? I don't think that there is an answer out there for any library yet. What is successful? Is there a number? Is it the way that you make people feel? You can't count attendance. Yeah. Um, we're at the mercy of social media. And what about those people who um, may not be able to connect to the internet? Because 30% of our community is not, um, internet, they do not have internet at this point. So we want to look at different ways to help them. So currently we offer um, a dial a story. So you can call into our library and we will have a pre-recorded story for kids to listen to at night. Or we've done radio story times where we'd read on the radio. Um, we're looking at telephone programs for adults. So maybe those seniors that are right now in assisted living maybe we can talk about books with them over the phone and they can just have someone to talk to. Um, and although our meeting rooms are closed, what programs can we do that people don't just watch a video, but they participate in a video. So, um, you know, community conversations are always a great thing on there. Um, let's see that that's a little bit of some of those services. I think curbside also, I'm curious to see what other libraries will do, but I think it will be a new permanent, mm -hmm. um, service because it's really simple. Mm -hmm. And even if it wasn't pandemic, you know, we have busy families who just want to get their stuff and get out. So yeah, that's, that's just a few of the things that we're thinking about yeah. who knows what we'll be able to accomplish, but. Yeah, it's awesome. I mean, yeah, it feels like in many ways the mission the mission hasn't changed at all, really. And some of these, you know, you probably had seedlings of these ideas before, but now it's like, let's, you know, this is the time. Um, it's exciting. And I'm sure really yeah. almost overwhelming, you know, to think through yes. all of this stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how are, um, I mean, I just, I always think about like how, how this must be as a library professional. Like you are, you're leading six, six different libraries through this. Um, I'm sure that this was not part of your your training how to how to lead people through a, um, very, a very scary uncertain time. What has it been like for you? Um, you know, it's definitely not what I trained for. It's not what I expected. I remember when it all began in early in I think it was mid March on the Monday that we had sat down as a leadership team and said, there is no way that we would ever close the library. And then by Friday, we closed the library. <laughs> so um, I feel like I maybe didn't sleep in March and April, but in a way it had me a little energized to focus my time and attention on finding a way to support our community in unique ways. So one, as an administrator, I need to make sure that I'm supporting my staff and they're safe and healthy and uh, that they can do their job to the best of their ability. And on the other hand, I want to be available to our community. So it really, it was really hard to sort of find that balance between being open and being safe. Mm -hmm. um, and we did that well. And I think it, what I really liked is how much the pandemic has brought people together, even though we can't see each other. Mm -hmm. So our staff is closer than ever before. I think we realize what's important and they support our mission 10 times more than they ever did. Um, our community values us a lot more. And I, I mean, I won't lie, it's, it's hard. And some days if I have to say the word pandemic again, I'm just like, <laughs> 
going to put money in a vacation plan or something like that. But um, it's also exciting to see what we can do for the future. So it's a little bit of a shake up. Um, but yeah, it's, it's been interesting. Yeah, well said. I felt that's how I felt about the word unprecedented at first. I was like, I can't say it anymore. I don't want to no hear that. I want to say it. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Very awesome. And so um, the staff is good. You guys are sort of rocking and rolling with the new, with the new normal, quote unquote. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're good. And they're um, very creative. It's been interesting to just to say, okay, before we open our doors, um, what services do we have to have? What is our core service that existed before? And is it the same core service? And what is the service that we want to add? And does it fit our mission? And so I was meeting with um, our circulation department last week. And I said, how are you doing? You interact with the most people every single day. How do you feel? And they said, you know, of everything, going to work is the best part. Um, they like the interaction because they couldn't have it otherwise. We have a lot of safety precautions in place and they've learned to change things because we're open limited hours that we never were able to do before that they are so much more focused on customer service. Mm. Um, they said, you know, we don't have to do everything during every hour of the day. We get it done before we open. And then when we're open, we're only there for those people. So mm. I think that's been really wonderful just to see them focus back on why we're here yeah and understand that that's yeah. really great yeah um no oh, this is so wonderful i i love to i might i next to being a librarian i think my job is the best because i get to talk to, to librarians and i'm always so inspired yeah. by, by what you guys are doing especially in a pandemic <laughs> <I'm> like, right <laughs> <laughs> um yeah i mean there's just so many there's there are some bright spots in all of this and and not like, you know, not to minimize any of the hardships at all. Um, I feel like we've covered some of the, some of the bright spots and silver linings, but I'm wondering if there's maybe one more that sticks out to you, um, you know, that you would want to call out and all of this mess, what, what might a bright spot be? Hmm. Um, I would probably say the most bright spot had been being closer with our communities. Um, when we closed, we knew that we were missed. We got the phone calls. We, we got the emails. You know, you have people who are frustrated because they miss their library and you have people who are grateful and just glad that you're safe. Um, and when we opened, they were there, they were waiting for us. They were thanking us. Sometimes they tried to bake us things. You know, I think when the library was closed or when it was open pre pandemic, just like so many other services, it was status quo and therefore we all took it for granted that life was just what it was. And then when you close something as basic as a library, you realize how important that is. I, you know, I had people saying, if you do not open, I do not have my lifeline. Yeah. So we have to get you open. And even our patrons um, who we reach and we deliver materials to their home, they're like, we just miss you. Please come anything. I need to talk to you. So just calling, we called our regular patrons, which is above and beyond. And mm -hmm. um, it wasn't something I had to ask staff to do. They said, can I call this person? I'm worried about mm -hmm. them. Or I just wanna check on this person or can we share this information? So the staff, when we went to open, they were, um, they were ready. They wanted to open a week before we did, they were, excited our, our branches said you know if I could sneak out the window I would just to just to talk to people so um yeah that would definitely be the big silver lining and the other thing too is we before this we had really thought you know what's new what's great what do we want to do that's that we've never tried before and sometimes you get so um wrapped up into the idea of innovation that you may not think about those basic services. So we had really been um, fortunate, I guess, to think of this year as our back to basics year. So we looked at this year as let's really evaluate core services. Let's think about what we do at our base level and what is important. And can we make our collections even better than they were before? Can we have less programs, but make them better and more um, powerful for the community? How do we support schools right now? Because my gosh, how does anybody support a school in the middle of a pandemic? 
um, without creating more work for them. So for, for us, it's been interesting to see that we're a little bit on the precipice of rethinking, I think, library services and talking about um, ways that we can maybe not even reinvent ourselves, but get ourselves back to those basic services and build from there because that's what our community loves. So that's really great. Oh, yeah. thank you so much. Really appreciate you joining us here on the webcast today and um, can't wait to share your, your experience with, with the audience. Yeah, thank sure. you. Absolutely. You're welcome.